What's up and welcome to Banshee Boat. If you haven't done it yet, hit subscribe. Turn your notifications on for our weekly video every Saturday at 5 o'clock. Today's topic aims to provide clarification on the differences between outboards, inboards, and stern drives. By the end of this video, you'll be able to understand the differences between all three engines, the pros and cons, and why one boat might be preferable over another. Stay tuned. Woo! Banshee Boat, baby! Close. Banshee boat for everything boating. These maneuvers could be dangerous if not operating the boat properly. Do so at your own risk. Make sure to always have boating safety equipment, pleasure craft license on board, and always wear your PFD. Be conscious of those around you. Respect the shared water weight. Remember, never drink alcohol on board. Always play safe on the water. Let me know in the comments what kind of boat you have, why it's the best, or better yet, tell me what your dream boat is. So first, let's take a look at inboards. These engines are located inside the hull, hence the name inboard. These engines have a drive shaft attached to the propeller. Unlike outboards, inboards have a rudder which controls the steering. Within that category of inboards, there's two different types that you could encounter, V-drive and D-drive, both with their own performance benefits. D-drive means that the engine is mounted in the center of the boat and the rudder is built into the hull underneath the boat. This design produces little wake and it's a great option for avid slalom water skiers. These boats handle like a race car and there's no bow rise. On the downside, even though this design is energy efficient, the placement of the engine takes up substantial mid-cabin space that could have been allocated more efficiently for storage. Plus, if you want to compensate for lack of weight, that means you're going to have fat sacks everywhere. D-drives can also be noisier due to the location of the engine in the center of the boat. This will impede the passengers from having conversations. However, this might not be viewed as a bad thing because sometimes you just want everybody to shut up. Another thing, picture having a big awkward hump in the center of your boat, which might be able to double as a seat, but maybe not. V-drive means the engine stored under the rear, putting more weight towards the transom, creating a bigger wake. These boats are perfect for water sports, so if you're into wakeboarding, wake surfing, tubing, this is probably what you're gonna go for. These boats have more storage and generally better seating. These boats are also typically more expensive than D-drives, and keep in mind, there's more parts involved with this design and a bigger potential for things to go wrong. With all inboards, trailering the boat is actually more complicated. This is because the underwater running gear extends below in a fixed position and there's no option for trim tilt. This increases the likelihood of incurring damage or having an accident when you're doing intricate or complicated maneuvers. If you're new to boating, this is definitely something you should consider. Let's look at outboards. With outboards, the motor's mounted outside the boat's hull, high up on the transom, hence the word outboard. With an outboard, the steering's controlled by moving the entire engine. There could be a handle grip for steering, or there could be power steering and power trim tilt. Used outboards are extremely popular and often the first to be considered for their affordability and longevity. You can find used outboards from 30 years ago that still run great. Additionally, you can do so much of the maintenance yourself. They're easy to work with and the housing pops right off the top of the engine. This engine is a complete unit on its own. It's easily removable and can be put on a new boat at any time. This option alone provides you a ton of versatility. These boats are great for shallow water and therefore a great choice for fishermen. The propeller can easily be lifted up right out of the water as you come to shore, preventing any damages. This also means the prop won't accumulate any algae, marine growth, or barnacles because it's just not sitting in the water all the time. The cons of outboard? Whatever happens, happens. They're loud and they smell. Great, you can still get the same power as an inboard, you just have to have multiple motors mounted on the transom. You can't wake surf and you lose a platform at the back where the motor's mounted. Lastly, let's talk about stern drives, also referred to as inboard outboards because they share similarities with both. Similar to an inboard, four-stroke engines mounted on the inside of the boat. 
Some benefits of the stern drive include the sporty look achieved from the handsome transom since the engine is hidden underneath the boat inside the hull. This also allows for more room in the interior and a large transom platform. This extra room could bring you a lot of joy. Sunbathing for the ladies, picnics, and just a lot of extra room so you're not feeling claustrophobic. Sometimes being cramped on a boat with the inability to leave your seat can take some of the fun out of it. The cons of stern drive. Because stern drives bring the prop out and out of the hull, this could bring the prop in dangerous proximity to swimmers and surfers. You have to be extremely conscious of the depth of water. You can't beach an inboard outboard, but you do have the option to trim up and that does allow you to avoid some things in the water. They can also be a little trickier to winterize because it's hard to get into those small spaces. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you want any further clarification, feel free to comment below. Let me know what you think and I'll see you next week. This is Banshee Boat signing out. Check out one of these other fantastic videos. You won't be disappointed.